Good day, fellow investors. In the community tab, I asked you to give me stock research suggestions, and four of the most researched stocks were Stoneco, Sophie, HPQ, and consequently also HPE. And in this video, I want to share my research process on such new stocks. Of course, do the analysis, discuss the fundamentals, discuss the risk and reward fundamental thesis, as we always do. And all I ask you in return, if you get value from this video, all the research and analysis you have to do is just to analyze that like button to support the channel with the YouTube algorithm. Let's start with the analysis. Stoneco, the Brazilian fintech ecosystem company. So Stoneco, of course, very requested to do research now as it is a Buffett buy here. Then it had its ups and downs, boomed with the tech crazy fintech boom arc whatever. And since then it is down a staggering 87%. Yes, 87. You heard that right. The market cap for analysis is 3.6 billion US dollars traded on the NASDAQ. The reason for the decline, we had a lot of negative situations, a snowballing of negative news, Paseguros scams with the POS ter terminals. We had collaterals that they thought it was there, but due to the reclassification of measurement in Brazil, it wasn't. Then they didn't increase interest rates alongside the increases in interest rates in Brazil that hit their bottom line severely. Of course, missing estimates consequently. They made an acquisition and making acquisitions is always tricky as you buy the good, but also the bad in a company. And there is simply a lot of uncertainty when combined with exuberance with the high stock price then 87 percent down is not an unusual situation so registration of receivables that they thought there were but then they weren't so they are dealing with that credit segment but they think they will restart crediting in 2022 of course on better terms but the growth won't be as high as aggressive as it was when people without collateral could borrow their mission is simply a provider of technology solutions that empower merchants and integrated partners to conduct economic commerce so we have financial services and software related to merchants, them buying and selling, of course. And we could say that Stone is the financial provider displacing the old ways of finance and creating the new fintech finance world in a country like Brazil. The company has been growing extremely fast. If you look at revenues, almost a 10x, it will be a 10x in what is this, six, seven years. So that is a very, very fast growth company. And it has been profitable up till 2021 when the negative news hit the count accounting, the increased cost that they already paid for marketing in Q1 2022, etc. Links acquisition, but it was profitable and will use this profitability later for valuation. Plus for a fintech, company the very peculiar thing is that it's trading close to book value per share which is something very special you usually find 50 times book value not one book value so the business has been really exploding client base over 1.7 million they are expanding on that client base with a banking platform so insurance client deposits cards credit of course that will restart in 2022 has been paused now but there is still likely some value they also sold part of the non-performing loans above book value so there could be there and they have learned their lesson as we'll see later profitability and cash flows due to high investments the cash flows are negative and this will also be a great example of how to value a company that's growing fast and has negative cash flows going forward they expect to grow to double over the next year especially thanks to the links acquisition still invest in growth areas and build that ecosystem of fintech in 
Brazil and even turn profitable already in Q1 2022 and then see its margins increase through the year, thus we can expect higher profits, maybe even 2019-2020 levels. And now let's discuss the risk and reward investing thesis. When you are building an ecosystem like Amazon has done, then you shouldn't care about profits at all because you are creating value for your clients, creating value for yourselves, and then only later creating value for shareholders. So it's the shared economy. And when you do that, you want to get a strong position like Amazon did, and then you fend off competitors, you can really, really grow. So I would tell the management, forget about profits for 10 years. But of course, don't destroy value by doing stupid things. So when it comes to such growth stocks, one, in this case, and we have learned over the last decades that one might also forget about profits. But of course, not profits coming from mistakes. This is from the last conference call with the CEO, and he said that the mistakes were clearly there, that they took an aggressive approach in 2021, their credit offering was ramped up too quickly, which led to losses with the problems with the national registry system that they weren't prepared to deal with. Of course, also they delayed repricing their interest rates that hurt them and not the customers. This is the building of the ecosystem. And as we said, unfortunately, you can't focus on profits or you shouldn't focus on profits when you're building something like this. But still, there were profits and it is likely that there will be profits again in the future as they said that this is just for the quarter and then margins will improve. So if I take the Brazilian real, 800 million in profits, that could be 170 million dollars. We compare that to the market capitalization and we are at a price to earnings ratio of 20 for a company growing 100%. Peter Lynch would say that you have to pay a price earnings ratio that's below the growth rate. Here we have a price earnings ratio forward of 20 for a growth rate of 100%. So according to Peter Lynch looking for growth stocks, this would be extremely cheap. But this is Brazil, so there is also increased risk. They are building an ecosystem in a very, very volatile system. If you just check the currency, it was crazy. Inflation, political issues. So it is Latin America. So there must be also something to keep in mind. But then maybe the best investment thesis here is to simply take a Warren Buffett approach. Warren Buffett bought on the IPO for $30 per share. Then when it tripled, he sold approximately 25% of the position, got his money back, and now he is holding for the long term likely for ever. So that might be an interesting approach. So you buy now it is, as it is extremely cheap, with the exposure that you can tolerate, whatever happens, happens, because it is Brazil after all, it is a new company, they are still learning, they have hired a lot of people now, so those people might say, okay, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, let's kitchen sink everything, let's make it look as ugly as possible, so that our start for the future is lower, thus we can do better the new management that they have hired so that is always a risk there is definitely risk but there is also huge potential if they triple their business in the next i don't know five years this is 2.4 billion that's about 400 million us dollars thus you could own stone now at the future price earnings ratio of eight that still keeps growing keeps building an ecosystem keeps doing well then that is the risk reward. Thus, you can lose another 50%. The stock can easily go down to single digits again. But the upside is, of course, 4, 5x, as we have seen the stock much, much higher over time. This is 7x easily here, and this can happen again. Bad times, good times, the business is there, the ecosystem is growing. So, a very, very interesting growth 
risky play from Brazil. I personally prefer more value investments. This looks like a value growth investment, but you can't invest in everything. So I prefer my few stocks. In this case, I wouldn't put 25% of my wealth in the company, so it's not really for me. But maybe if you are looking for more such plays, it is for you. The next stock is in the same sector, Sophie. Same sector, similar story from 2021 and the peak of the tech sector, the stock is down 62%. The market cap for valuation comparisons, 7.83 billion. Sophie is a company aiming for young people with high income and to provide all the things a bank, they are since recently a bank, all the things you need, everything online, and they again want to create an ecosystem and then create value and profits from there. Revenues have quadrupled over the last five years, but net income is increasingly declining and also cash flows. So they are growing, yes, but at a significant cost. However, Morningstar has them fairly valued for 100% upside. And if you look at what is in their valuation, they expect 34% growth over the next five years and then also an operating margin of 33% by 2031. So that is how far the predictions go to give this a fair valuation. For me, this is extremely risky because it is at the end just a lending business for now and just lending business, it is extremely competitive in the United States and it is aggressive. The company is very aggressive to get new business in. Why we see the losses there, thus it has to give you more to get you in. And then the thesis is based on some profits that will come when this ecosystem starts working. So this is extreme uncertainty because the business model isn't proven yet and therefore I would categorize this as extremely risky and I would say that Stone, the Buffett buy, is much much better both from a risk and reward perspective. And then there is something else. So revenue guidance 1.5 billion and 25% of revenue is for stock-based compensation. This is extreme, this is extreme dilution, this is extreme rewarding of the management and really really extreme and I really don't know what else to add here. This really increases also the risks, the returns over the long term. It looks more like the management is growing at all costs to get their stock-based compensation and this is their incentive and this is their focus. The rest is irrelevant and therefore it is a risky bet. Now a stock that might be considered value is Hewlett Packard. HPQ of course the company split in 2015 so we have to account for that and since then this company not HP Enterprises that we'll discuss in a moment has done pretty well. The market cap for comparisons is 38 billion Price earnings ratio very low and that's also why it's likely very requested. Dividend yield 2.75. Since the split the company has been slowly and steadily growing and especially enjoyed a good year in 2021 with high profits that lead now to the very very low price to earnings ratio. However operating income is lower and then we have to see okay at what level will this stabilize and if we go back to 2019 and take that as a stable year then the price earnings ratio is not seven but more around 12. Nevertheless dividends are there increasing dividends so really growing dividends that's always a positive. The Number of shares is constantly declining, so huge effort on buybacks and they expect to do more of those and if 
the company can just remain stable from a business perspective and do a lot of buybacks, that is already growth in dividend per share, earnings per share, and most likely also the stock price. We have discussed this video recently on Foot Locker that also plans to do a lot of buybacks and then also the inelastic market theory that when a company does buybacks the stock goes up and HP has a lot of cash flows and those cash flows are all the free cash flows are planned to be used in buybacks to give shareholder returns and you can see here that in 2021 6.2 billion have been used for buybacks and look at what happened to the stock price so up double a double as the company spent 25% of the market cap on buybacks the market cap doubled so that's in line with our inelastic theory video from Professor Gabay from Hardward I'll put the link into the description below if you haven't seen that video very very interesting and shows how big is the impact of these buybacks and the guidance is for free cash flows or at least 4.5 billion so really good more than 10 percent free cash flow yield and what the market is thinking when it comes to hp is that people will use less and less of computers at home more tablets more phones less printing less this less that and that hp will be a declining business however we see yes that is correct in the united states where there is a small decline in revenues but the rest of the world africa asia kids going to school buying the first computer notebook so that is still going on and there is growth and i think that Analysts like to focus whatever happens in the US, nothing else exists and nothing else matters. But as we can see below for HP, yes, it matters because most of revenues come outside of the US. So on the risk and reward, it is, let's say, a stable business, high cash flows. Of course, there is some competition, but maybe the free key players like Dell and Lenovo will try to keep those prices stable not really enter a war and therefore have stable cash flows. So it is likely a boring value investing to go forward, 10% likely return if they can keep things stable. The buybacks should push also the stock price higher. So that is also something you can play on. Of course, if they don't deliver on expectations of let's say flat revenues and flat cash flows or on their guidance, then it might get ugly from a stock price perspective but there will always be these cycles and that's something to follow however they have created value they are creating value still double digits returns expected and it all depends on whether you think that computers notebooks printers are going to be the past or will still be used in the future i personally can't work on a tablet or on a phone I need a desktop a printer or this and that and even if we use less and less a printer you still need to print that one paper that is something that might be there for HP in the long term so this is opposite than the growth stock but still from a risk reward perspective I think that the risk is let's say medium and the reward is also medium but let's say more of a value investment here. HPE, the stock didn't do much over the last years since the split. The market cap is 21 billion. Again, price earnings ratio of six and dividend yield of 2.8% for HPE. If we look at revenues have been stable, operating income has gone up and down. They had good numbers recently, but also lower numbers in the past. So they are pretty volatile and that's also how their industry is. They are also focused on dividends and buybacks, which is again a positive thing. And free cash flows are 2 billion, which again leads to a 10% free cash flow yield. The business is connectivity, cloud, data. That's why they separated from HP to have more clarity in that business segmentation. And they expect 
to get 6.5 to 7 billion of cumulative free cash flows over the next three years, that's around 2, 2 point something billion, so 10% free cash flow yield. However, they expect to do that on lower free cash flows now and then growing free cash flows in the future. And this is the key risk and reward here. If they deliver on these expectations, then it will be good. If they miss these expectations, then it will be bad. It is as simple as that. So to conclude, Stone Co, the risk is there, but the upside is also there. So definitely something for the most courageous to consider for some exposure and then to manage over time like Warren Buffett did. This is huge risk, more risk than reward, definitely. So something I would personally not even gamble on. HPQ, boring value investment, unliked business, unliked, so boring and Boring can deliver value through buybacks. This is highly competitive environment. I would say even more competitive than this one. Depends on the investments. Therefore, I would say even a bit more risky for a lower reward than HPQ. So the definite winners here are HPQ and Stone Co. I'll do another stock that fell 85% during the week next week. So make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell. Check my Intel analysis and what I do with my research and research platform if you're interested for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.